Hey everybody, we could pretty much call this a half and half video between a video review and a tech video. Here we're going to look at the DynaPower USA ADW 500 500 watt power supply. This power supply has been in the Cubic Pyramid Tower Deluxe for a little bit over a year. Installed it in March of 2009 and I pulled it a couple days ago, it's July 2010. Take a look here at the specs. It is the At Power, which is a brand of DynaPower USA. It is a model ADW5063. Take a look here at the outputs. Pause. You can look at the additional information. Okay. See here has a peak load of 500 watts. And plus 12 volt rail puts out 20 amps. This power supply has a nice shiny red coat of paint. It's got goldish looking fan grills and goldish looking screws. Really nice looking power supply. It has a sleeved connection, UV sleeved. 20 plus 4 pin connector on the main, 6 Molex connectors, 2 serial ATA connectors, and 1 ATX 12 volt connector. Now we had the power supply open, we have another power supply board sitting next to it. Do a little technical comparison here. First, we'll go ahead and look at this power supply. I'm not sure exactly who manufactured it couldn't find a manufacturer name on the PCB. I know DynaPower USA has power supplies from X Power and ISO. ISO being one of the better quality ones. And this one is also another better quality one. I'm not sure who manufactured this one though. Take a look here. The build quality on this power supply is rather nice. Take a look here at the side. At our filtering stage, the big old massive heat sink here, big transformers, decent fans, decent casing, all that kind of stuff. We'll take a look here at this power supply board here. This is the board that comes in the black steel 580 watt power supply from Case Gears, a Sunbeam brand. This is one of their shoddier quality power supplies. The Cube Community Bin Tower Deluxe has a power supply from the same brand, but it's made from a higher quality manufacturer. The power supply that's currently in the Mid Tower Deluxe is the Case Gears Eco Element 650 watt APFC 80 plus certified power supply. Back to this unit. As you can see, this I mean this much lower quality overall. Here's the filtering stage. As you can see, our filtering capacitors and coils are bypassed. The only two capacitors are even here are these two disc capacitors located here. That's the only filtering component they even included on here. Here is the fuse. This is where the AC power comes in at. And of course here they have these two or rather four small diodes. And then we have two filtering capacitors here. They are 470 microfarad at 200 volts. These heat sinks, which seem okay, but not the best. The transformers are quite small, too. And you, as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of stuff bypassed here. Not a very good design on the output section. Now, here are a lot of issues with the capacitor layout on this particular board. Here, a lot of failures from this power supply occur within the capacitors. 
go ahead and come back to this unit. The thing is, both these power supplies cost about the same. This power supply on Newegg.com is around $25. This one here is like $18. Used to be like $23.99, something like that. But it's really cheap quality versus good quality. However, there is one flaw with this particular power supply I'm starting to notice. Take a look here. There's one capacitor back there. It's kind of starting to bulge out a little bit. It is a... It is marked JEE -E for a brand 2200 microfarad at 10 volt. I have two of these power supplies. This one came from the Mid Tower Deluxe. And the other one is currently in the Mid Tower Deluxe Black Max. I got these two power supplies run at the same time, I think a week difference. The other power supply is still in service right now. They both function just fine, no stability issues, no nothing. But this one capacity here starting to bulge out like this could mean a could mean a potential failure in the future. I am not sure whether it's just a design flaw or if it's just a wrong choice of capacitor is why this particular capacitor has bulged out while the rest of them are still fine. I'm going to replace that capacitor back there with a 16 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor and see what happens because they could have made a mistake and put a 10 volt capacitor on the 12 volt rail I'm assuming I'm not quite sure though once I repair this power supply I'll probably use it in a spare desktop build and the other one will re return to its system after I repair it I mean other than this one capacitor here I mean other than this the build quality of this unit I mean, you just can't beat it for the price. Take a look here at the side again. These two main filtering capacitors are rated at 680 microfarad at 200 volts. We have our white capacitors, also known as disc capacitors, here. We have our filtering coil there. I mean, this, uh, I mean, there's nothing bypassed here, as I can see. And instead of using this plain old diodes for rectifying, we have a rectifying bridge which can handle more current. A whole lot better than that kind of setup. I mean, you take a look here. Instead of using soldering to have the AC input wired to the board, we have a plug. For easy maintenance even the fuse has its own slot most cheap power supplies have the fuse soldered in like that but this one has a convenient slot so if you ever had to change the fuse you only have to hit a solder in there the only thing about this power supply though is it has a rather old build design a lot of the amperage is on the 5 volt rail rather than 12 volt rail and the efficiency isn't that good either only 65 percent this power supply runs a bit warm but overall I mean the build quality is I mean great for the price other than this one capacitor here which may be a particular flaw in this unit other than that I mean you just can't beat it for the price I mean I still recommend buying this unit There's, there's my opinions about this power supply. Any questions or comments, let me know.